What's going on everybody? Tim from Tierfond Orbital. The SK Turbine. We've got exposed wires. We've got vents in the grip. We've got a chassis with NeoPixels all over it. So let's talk about it, right? So this is a KY Lightsaber Turbine video. It's a, going to be a walkthrough slash build video. This will be going off to the client along with a KY SK, uh, which I will probably do a video for right after this. But I posted some work in progress pics and a final set of pictures yesterday and people have been asking some questions as to what it what went into the build and why there are so many neopixels all over it once again <laughs> like you know because i'm the neopixel guy on chassis so yeah i'm going to talk a little bit about the build and we'll talk about the chassis and i did make some some body mods that i'd like to talk about as well so let's get into it right so this is the let's get a light on here this is the ky the turbine from ky lightsabers I would like to start at the bottom and work my way up and then we'll do like a demo on how to use the hilt, you know, like I usually do. So starting at the bottom, when I received this hilt uh, direct from Kevin at KY, the bottom of this pommel was wide open. Um, I mean, it, it's just a giant gaping hole uh, that goes into the speaker speaker chamber. And in my opinion, that does not allow for the best resonance. I did check in with Kevin and he did, you know, reassure me that, yeah, that's that's how his design is. So I, I don't know if it's, you know, maybe to allow for the option to make it into a staff. I, I don't know. But for me, having some kind of cover for the speaker not only protects the speaker, but it does allow for a little bit more resonance. So this is actually a pommel cap from Custom Saber Shop that I attached to the bottom of this and I just gave it the aluminum black treatment just to make it look in line with the rest of the hilt, right? So we've got wires all over this thing, bunch of exposed wires. Kevin from KY ships the grip blank with nothing in these windows, okay? He actually did send with this build some of this. It's like aluminum chicken wire. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, and attaching this, you know, in fact, I'm not really sure if this is meant for the grip or for the crystal chamber. Um, but I wanted to go with some kind of venting on the grip. So I put my own steel baffling inside of the grip and heat stained it. And that's been welded, JB welded to the inside of this grip, right? Um, so there are NeoPixels on the chassis, so we do get some shine through. Through these these side windows on the top we all we have another window i designed a, a seat for an oled screen to be perfectly aligned with this window and we'll show that when we activate it grip is a set screw grip this does not twist so it's held in place with a set screw here we've got an exposed crystal chamber behind this crystal chamber i also added some steel baffling that all that helps with hiding some of the wires because there are three conductors actually four so three yeah yeah there's three conductors that go up to the emitter so to help hide those wires i did add some another steel baffling behind the crystal chamber that's been heat stained we've got some really really cool uh, shine through here at the in the emitter piece. These are like some gold uh, It almost looks like jewelry pieces. I mean, it's really really cool unique do design But there's there's holes behind these so you get shine through when your blade is in and up top Here's our emitter, right? We've got a PCB emitter from CC Sabres that lights when there's no blade the blade retention screw was a large m4 hex screw I swapped that out and tapped a black thumb screw to the top of this so it makes it easier uh, to get your blade in and out without, without having to get like an Allen key out or anything like that, right? So let's talk about how to use it first. Um, well, you know what? Let's talk about the chassis. Sorry. So here is the chassis for this particular build. I did this in Fusion. Actually, you know, I, do, I always forget to mention this. I do a, a significant amount of my prototyping in an app called Shaper 3D on the iPad Pro. It allows me to use like an Apple Pencil to get some basic shapes and my basic measurements down. 
and then I can export that as a step file and bring it into Fusion. So that's what I did with this. We've got room for a 24 millimeter speaker. Now, the thing with KY Sabres, I mean, his grips are gigantic. I mean, there is so much room to play with in those grips. But because I added those steel baffling covers for the side windows, I had to edit the shape in the outer diameter of this chassis a little bit. So it has room for a 24 millimeter speaker, but I had to make slits along the side of the chassis to allow for clearance past those steel baffling covers. Profi board sits here. We've got plenty of room for to get the SD card out and to put a USB in if need be. Profi also flips out if it if you need to get to it. Here is the OLED screen tray. The OLED kind of slides in and the terminals and PCB chip of the OLED itself is hidden underneath this lip. Underneath, behind the speaker, I added channels to put, I think they're 15, 15, 15 NeoPixel strips. There's 15 in each strip. So I was able to slide them down into these channels uh, to keep them hidden. So they're essentially, I, I quote, baked into the chassis, right? I printed this chassis in translucent resin and then masked off all of these windows and matte painted it black. When I did a pass with matte black, like a Tamiya matte black spray paint, while these were masked off, once I did that, I kept them masked and did another pass of pewter, like rub and buff, and taped off some of the other detailed sections and did then went over that with some detailed paint, right? So just a couple of painting process on this one just to give it a lot more detail. Uh, did Tierfon Orbital and Arabesh embossed on the side here. And this is a stationary chassis, so it marries up into the upper part of the emitter with a set screw uh, up in here. And that's it, right? Nice and easy. Let's talk about how to use the hilt itself. So as I said, this is not an unscrewable grip. I believe the majority, if not all, of KY's lightsabers are all that, you know, static, stationary, uh, set screw grips. So you will need an Allen key to remove this set screw that holds the grip in place. You just unscrew that and the grip slides off. All right, so here's our chassis. So. I do want to say and give a disclaimer that when you're putting your battery in this chassis, if not all resin chassis, you do want to kind of cradle the chassis uh, while you're putting your battery in. Okay, resin chassis, they're, they're very um, particular uh, resin chassis. The thing with resin is you can get a lot of detail, a lot of detail in your design work and your Greebly work, uh, but it's just not as strong as like an FDM print. Uh, and I'm gonna probably catch shit for saying that, <laughs> excuse my language. Uh, but like if you were to drop an FDM print chassis uh, in, the, in the hilt from a high altitude, like I'm talking like three or four feet, the FDM chassis will probably survive that fall, probably. The, it, the likelihood of that chassis surviving that, that fall is greater than that of a resin chassis. Resin chassis, even if you're printing in like a high strength ABS resin, they're delicate. They can be very delicate. Okay, so I just want to give that disclaimer. Um, so when you're putting your battery in, you want to kind of cradle the chassis, right? The flat part of the battery goes towards the speaker. So here's your spring. You put your battery in. There is a kill switch here. So you turn your kill switch on. You're gonna get an audible cue. Here's that screen, that Profi uh, OLED screen. So I did do some configuring with that OLED. We'll talk about that, that in a minute. So once you have your battery in, you want to line up. So what I do is you line up this window with the OLED and you just kind of slide your grip on, right? And once it's in, you take your set screw and screw the grip in. I could find the hole here. There we go. You're ready to go. So let's let's bring it down. So here we are. Twist to activate is on. 
push the deactivators on. So there's that shine through in the grip on both sides. We have the, so the OLED, what I ended up doing, turn this, let me turn this off. So OLED support with Profi, it's there. Like you can have a screen with a Profi board, but it is not as easy as CFX. So this, in my last video, I was talking about the caveats uh, you know, pros and cons of both boards. Both CFX and Profi are fantastic boards, but each one has their differences, right? So with Profi, uh, you know, in my opinion, you can get really granular with the blade animations and me being like a code guy, it's just, Profi just came like second nature to me. CFX is also great for people who don't want to stare at code to edit their blades. Uh, and, and like OLED support and Bluetooth support is fantastic with CFX. But OLED's really easy to, you know, put whatever screens you want. And I think, you know, Crystal Focus has, you know, pre-downloadable screens that you can get. With Profi, it's just not as easy. Um, so with this build and in the config, I added different OLED screensavers to each font, right? So when you, so I think this is... I'm not sure what font this is. So that's that that's the screen that displays when it's on. So if we change font, You're in fire. so like Durin Fire's got a, a crystal animation on the screen. It's like a rotating crystal. So every font's different. Uh, there is a crystal up top here with its own blade. There's a neo pixel underneath. There's one like a single neo. So that's one blade. The side, the two side strips are their uh, their own blade as well. So there are three blades in this config. I'm sorry, let me back that up. I this this crystal is in line with the blade. I think. <laughs> I don't remember. Let's change the font. Yeah. So I tied that crystal in with the blade, so it matches the blade animation. Okay. Let's put a blade in it real quick and do a demo. You want to make sure there's, so like I said, there's a, a black thumb screw up here. This is from Custom Saber Shop. That's going to act as your blade retention screw. Set your blade down. Make sure it's resting on those brass pins and tighten your thumb screw down. It's got like a rainbow swing on it. I've got a... That Vader font's got an Omni swing on it. I'll probably edit that out of there. I'm not a fan of that. So when you swing it, it kind of gives a different, scrolls through a different RGB color scheme. So we've got a bunch of fonts on here. So let's talk about buttons real quick. So this bottom button is your activation. Top is your aux button. To scroll through fonts, you're going to hit your aux while the saber is on. I will put the config on the SD card as a backup, but the SD card is also loaded with like 25 fonts. So you can edit your config as you see fit. And that's it. So when the blade is, is off, we do have some different animations on those side NeoPixels, and th those are all different when uh, with each font. Actually, I did want to show, let's do like a little, let's show you what we have on the chassis. I must, yeah. I must be cautious wherever I go. So there's those NeoPixels along the side, and here's the screen. Right? So, pretty interesting build. I, you know, I, when I, this, so because this was the first turbine I've ever done, right, I really did not know what to expect as far as the grip section was concerned. And this was one of those cases where I started designing the chassis. 
And what I, what I usually do is, right, like I'll design the basic shape of the chassis and I'll do like a prototype test print and then put it in and, you know, start lining stuff up and get an, get an idea where I want to put Greeblies and things like that. And when I put that test chassis in, I saw that there was this window here and I was like, Man, it'd be cool to have an OLED there. It'd be cool to have a screen in there. So I, I ended up, you know, designing the chassis around that screen. And then as I continued, I was like, you know, having those windows for to show the chassis off is cool, but it would be really cool if there were some lights, uh, some NeoPixels on that thing. So it was, it was a very creative process with this particular chassis, right? So the screen is also on its it's on a timer so that's not going to just continuously drain the battery i think this turns off after a minute or something like that so thank you very much for watching to the client thank you very much for your business thank you for trusting me with the build i will get this in the mail shortly along with the sk that's going with this as well to the viewers thank you very much for watching if you have any questions or comments please don't be a stranger and with that being said May the force be with you, always.